Good morning, boys and girls. Today is Tuesday, April 28th, 2020. Please rise for the American and Texas Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Now for a brief moment of silence. You may now be seated. Boys and girls, this morning I wanna to talk to you guys about something very important, and that is sleep. Sleep is a very important habit to keep us healthy. It's important for both grown-ups and kids, but especially for children. So at your age, um, doctors recommend that you should be getting between 10 and 11 hours of sleep every night. That's every night. So consistently and routinely, as often as possible, 10 to 11 hours at night. Now I know because we're at home now and we're not actually leaving our homes to go to school, it's very easy to fall into this trap of feeling like it's not a school night, it's a week at night, a weekend night every night and maybe staying up way past your bedtime. And I wanna remind you that it's very important that you continue to get those 10 to 11 hours of sleep at night for various reasons. The first one is getting enough sleep keeps you healthy. Believe it or not, when you're sleeping, you're growing. You're getting increased blood flow to your muscles and you're getting all sorts of rest in your brain. And what that does, it allows you the next day after you've gotten a full night's sleep, it allows you to be able to be alert so that you can work, uh, do all your homework and study without feeling drowsy or sleepy. It uh, allows you to focus better. And another really awesome benefit about of getting enough sleep is your mood. When you sleep enough, you're happier and you're probably cranky when you haven't had enough sleep or maybe not as easy to be friendly or patient to your brothers and sisters or your friends or your parents. So there are many, many benefits to sleep. What I invite you to do is try to set a bedtime for yourself. Maybe you already had one prior to us staying home. Whatever that bedtime is, I want you to just try to stick to it for the rest of this week. So going to bed at the same time every night, okay? Do the math and make sure whatever time you go to bed, count and make sure it's 10 to 11 hours from the time you go to bed to when you wake up in the morning. The second thing is, I invite you to try to keep a sleeping log. So what a sleeping log is, it's something really simple. In the mornings when you wake up, write down what time you went to bed, what time you woke up, and then write down how you feel. Because you might notice that on the nights that you go to sleep later, maybe you wake up earlier, you don't feel as good, you don't feel as energized, maybe you don't feel as happy. So it's keeping a sleep log is a good way for you to track how sleep affects you. Also, some tips on getting a good night's sleep. Make sure that your room is nice and dark. If you need to close the curtains to make it darker, go ahead and do that. Make sure it's quiet so it's time to put away the phones. It's time to turn off the TV. If you have a TV in your room, turn it off. Turn off all the devices. I know some kids like to watch TV right before bed, but you know, recent studies show that actually watching TV is not a good idea right before bedtime because it really affects kids um, and being able to fall asleep and stay asleep longer, okay? So try, if you can avoid it, instead of watching TV before bedtime, maybe read a book. Um, those are my tips for today. I hope you give them uh, a try. I hope you try to go to sleep at a consistent bedtime this entire week, and I hope you see some added benefits to doing so, okay? Have a great and terrific Tuesday. Hi, good morning, Valley West. This is Miss Palmin coming to you with another lesson. Today we're going to continue using natural materials like we previously did with the portrait lesson. The goal for this lesson is to create a reflection symmetry butterfly. But what is a reflection symmetry? It is like a mirror image. So I will draw a line dividing the butterfly. So each half is a reflection of the other. So let's go and collect natural materials, such as leaves, flowers, 
beads, rocks, and twigs. Today, I created my artwork outdoors. And here are some examples of the butterflies. Now for my third, fourth, and fifth graders. I want you to challenge yourself a little bit more. So get some scissors and cut out some shapes. Cut them into circles, squares, or any other shape to create a beautiful butterfly. I hope you try it and have fun.